Hi, my name is Luigi Zuccarelli, and I will be presenting the IoT PaaS, Internet of Things Platform as a Service, with my colleague Fan Zhang. Unfortunately, Fan could not make this recording session, so I will also be doing his presentation as well. Um, so the ask was to come up with a platform as a service, which really is the application layer and data layer to implement a solution um, with um, the following requirements, that it be API based, in other words, API endpoints for data in, data out, um, RESTful um, API endpoints um, based on JSON. So very, very standard um, requests um, that we have an analytics element where we can actually aggregate some specific data that was required, that it have a AI scoring element or a pluggable AI scoring engine, um, which was a nice to have really, it wasn't a, a major part of the requirement. And then a, a dashboard to view um, the data in graphic form. We have a requirement of seven days worth of data for any um, device that was that was used and I'll elaborate on that later why seven days um, it was just part of the the ask um, over and above that the technical requirements we had to adhere to were event driven microservice architecture that it be loosely coupled based on Linux containers uh, that we have a scalable system that it is high has high availability and that it could handle um, 300, the ask was about 300 million documents in a day. And you, that sort of roughly is about three and a half thousand requests per second. So it is um, a fairly high throughput requirement. So the tech stack that we chose for the, the pairs would uh, obvious, obviously be um, based on a container orchestrator because the requirement was that it be on Linux containers. So the, the obvious choices are Kubernetes OpenShift. Um, for the messaging queue, we made use of Kafka um, and we have message producers and consumers that we could then implement um, and then have them plug in and out on for our loosely coupled architecture. The database side, we made use of uh, Couchbase, uh, no SQL database. The, the Couchbase um, is, is, is fairly impressive. It has a, um, a basic CRUD engine, um, your, your basic database engine. Um, however, uh, you would need like three dedicated nodes. So it would be set up in a high availability type implementation on three nodes um, that would be replicated uh, with persistent storage. And over and above that, you would have need an extra two nodes dedicated to eventing and um, the analytics uh, engine. Um, and then this does, this does consume a lot of resources. So um, I've also implemented a, um, a simple Redis interface and the choices, the choices up to the the user to deploy what they what they prefer. Uh, obviously, Couchbase gives you so much more. The front end was based on Vue.js completely, and back end on GoLang. Uh, GoLang is the technology that we very um, language that we're familiar with, and uh, for our um, I'll go for our. CRCD pipelines, we uh, implemented Argo, uh, CD and Tekton. Um, these are great open source projects and they can be deployed completely on Kubernetes. Um, obviously the um, OpenShift has the, um, the OpenShift pipelines, which is also based on, um, and on Tekton. Uh, before I elaborate on the actual IoT devices, I just want to say that these devices that we were using and testing on were um, medical devices. So it's um, based on non-invasive um, vital sign measurements. So uh, we had 
uh, various devices, um, and I'll show you in the um, the next slide. The uh, devices were that we used. One was a wearable device that only had three vital sign measurements. It's on the top right hand over here. Um, and the top right hand is the wearable non-invasive device that basically gave you systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure, um, SpO2, which is your blood, uh, blood oxygen saturation, and then heart rate. It did not have temperature and respiratory rate, so we had to improvise and build an interface that would then um, handle temperature and respiratory rate, and then we'd combine the readings into one, one um, JSON payload. Um, I also had a, a development kit that uh, we were asked to implement on. The development kit uses the same photoplasmograph. Um, it uses pulse transient times, um, and you can read up on that. There's some really good documentation online about that. Um, the, this device on the bottom left corner of the picture here is, uh, does also have temperature and accelerometer. And uh, the other pieces of electronics really was my uh, development interface to actually build um, an SBI, um, SBI communication channel for, the, um, for both the uh, wearable device and for these, this SDK type hardware device. Um, and the data would then be connected to this um, um, Omega Linux single board computer. Um, it would then read, the, uh, it will then have SPI interface, read the data from the, um, the uh, Bluetooth gateway, which is not shown here, but the watch, or should I say the wearable device will push data to the Bluetooth gateway. And the Bluetooth gateway is a TPC, um, um, TCP server. And from the TCP server, then we can inject the relevant data that we needed. Um, this then goes to this um, Omega device, which is really a Wi-Fi interface that then pushes uh, I've got a Golang process there, they're running and it uses HTTPS. So we'll have a secure connection um, to the actual uh, um, platform as a service. Um, so that's just an overview on, on the hardware that was used to, um, to implement the, the solution. So as I've mentioned, it's very um, um, medic orientated or medical, vital signs orientated, but you could change the, um, the implementation fairly easily. And I will discuss that in the actual detail architecture. So from a visual perspective, all the um, interface, or should I say the dashboard really for the analytics and the views into the data were based on um, Vue.js and deployed to Firebase. Um, Firebase is really cool. Um, it will uh, it uses a CDN and push data to edge servers that would then, you could then connect your pairs into specific um, regions and areas to, um, to sort of make use of, of the, the edge services. Um, I've also shown here the wearable device with the, the Bluetooth gateway. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have a picture of the Bluetooth gateway, but you could have several watches connect to the Bluetooth gateway. Um, you could then um, uh, intercept the TCP server that the Bluetooth gateway connects to and inject extra data. Uh, what I've shown you is our um, hardware device. Um, in the previous slide that then via the Wi-Fi module pushes also to the IoT platform. And then the user um, or doctor or physician or um, patient can actually then view uh, the data interface. The uh, in, uh, ingress into the um, application platform is via Elastic Load Balancer. Uh, this was deployed on, on AWS. 
and via the uh, ELB then to um, various uh, ingress points. So we had an ingress dedicated to the message producer. Um, I've shown you a couple of pods. You could re the, the nice thing with Kubernetes and OpenShift is that you can scale these pods. Um, they have a, a notion of a service and um, then the service will then um, use a round robin algorithm to connect to the different um, pods, which are really, we have a one-to-one -one correlation to Linux container. Uh, the the um, message consumer then would read off the data that was pushed on to the um, Kafka messaging queue and connect to either um, uh, Couchbase or Redis. And then we had um, another ingress, or should I say um, route uh, interface to an API gateway, which is basically an NGINX service that would uh, that is just deployed as a, a reverse proxy the nice thing there is we use config maps and you could then update and change the config maps as you add services and change the services the um, analytics service um, would um, then just present data for the dashboard um, we have an auth service just to uh, ensure that all endpoints were secure um, and then a, a machine learning service which was the pluggable um, machine learning interface. I also implemented a, IOT, um, a cron job. This was very Redis specific because we don't have the eventing feature. Um, Couchbase has a powerful eventing feature that you can write um, JavaScript interfaces to, to aggregate data and push data from one bucket to the next. Um, so I, uh, to implement that, I just used um, a cron job to read from data from Redis and then store it into a key value store for the aggregation. So that's basically the implementation of the different services. What I also did was implement a metrics interface. Um, and by the way, all the deployment templates um, to deploy Kafka. Kafka, we used Strimzy. Um, for Couchbase, we used the Couchbase operator. Um, for Redis, uh, there's a deployment, there's a, a Redis uh, HA deployment template in, in, in the repo. And again, all these, um, and for the, um, and, and for the actual observability, um, um, section on the, we have all the templates in in the um, repo and I'll have a link at the end of the slide that you can go have a look at. So we have a dedicated ingress again to a Grafana dashboard that then picks up from a um, Prometheus server that does all the scraping from the different microservices. The um, dedicated Kafka instance, um, again, would be put onto three, three dedicated nodes. These nodes were tainted. So we don't want any other services running on them. Um, and they each would have a Kafka Zookeeper instance on. This was before the, um, the, the newer version of Kafka, which does not have um, a Zookeeper. Um, again, for the Redis Couchbase, we had three dedicated nodes also tainted um, where we have an HA version of Couchbase or um, Redis and uh, for each in each availability zone we would have a, a persistent volume for Kafka and Zookeeper in case um, there was an outage we would we could have all data persisted as well as the persistent volumes for either Redis or um, Couchbase. Um, for the uh, analytics, I just um, gave a, a, a quick overview of basically, um, you know, the elements needed for the um, scoring. So basically you'd have the um, data engineer or data analyst um, updating information via Scala. Um, on, on their local development. Um, and then this would then create a bundle, a zip file. 
And there is a great project um, called MLeap. And um, it will then take that zip file. Um, and then you could push that zip file into the actual um, pod or deploy it within the pod. Um, and then the MLeap will pick up and handle um, the, the interface uh, via JSON for, for the actual scoring. So all development is done locally. You create a artifact, a zip. The zip is uploaded into the MLeap service and that can be used for, for the machine learning scoring. Um, so for the analytics side, as I mentioned, uh, Couchbase is a very powerful DB eventing uh, service where you can write a JavaScript to aggregate. And the great thing is that you can then streamline your, um, your database to handle, um, so you don't wanna to have too much data that you're going to be storing. So you set a time to live on the initial bucket um, where all the um, events are coming through from um, Kafka, then Couchbase has this eventing routine. It will pick up um, within, the, within the TTL, the time to live. So if you set the time to live to 10 minutes, just let's say, um, all depends on, on your um, capacity planning. But if you, if you let's, as an example, use 10 minutes, uh, you would need to have the aggregation um, the eventing running um, every five minutes just to ensure that you, you got all the data. You would aggregate the data and then push it to another bucket. So it's a really powerful feature within Couchbase. As I mentioned, I haven't implemented um, uh, with, for this implementation, I haven't, uh, I have used Redis. And so uh, I have a cron job that runs instead of um, uh, you know, the, the, because it doesn't have the eventing. Um, to go into more details now on the actual IoT performance um, and how we got to 3,500 requests per second after having a look at the, the architecture, what I did was I found two levels of optimization in the, um, I was, uh, the all the um, nodes were based on, um, core OS streams. So um, the actual settings are very uh, core OS specific. Um, so basically in the ETC security limits, I found that setting soft and hard limits for um, uh, uh, any user and route uh, to over 1 million, as well as the ETC syscontrol config file where we have the FS file max to over 1 million. Now I'm no Linux expert. So um, I found that these two configurations were, were enough for me to get the, the throughput that I wanted. But there is a, a readme file that I've also deployed um, that I have in the actual repository that you can go have a look at for extra um, kernel tweaks and setups for um, optimization on, on, on the host. So every host um, that had um, within our deployment would have the setting um, enabled. For the actual Kafka optimization, what I found was that really worked well was the setting up a cleaner. There, there's a, um, a service that runs and that the policy that I used was compact and delete and I set the log retention hours to, to, to one hour. Obviously, you can actually lower that. You can set it to a couple of minutes if you wanted to. But what's so nice about this is that the algorithm will then need a, a specific message ID and the message um, uh, data. And it will then um, look for duplicates. Um, basically compact those duplicates and you'll only have the latest data. So if you had, let's for example, say a thousand devices, you would have only a thousand um, um, sort of uh, pieces, uh, a thousand message IDs 
uh, within Kafka that will then only take the latest data compacted and delete the, the unwanted ones. So in this way, you preserve um, a lot of overhead um, with regards to um, uh, data storage. Uh, and this was one of the uh, optimizations that we found really worked well. Obviously, you 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 know th this is something that you can um, play around with and tweak. So what I did do here, and just to sort of indicate what this is all about, is that um, I created uh, um, via GoLang. Um, Go Bench. It's an open source project. I I cloned the project and then obviously updated and made some changes that would be very specific to the JSON payload. And I created 1,000 for this example, 1,000 um, different users with different payloads, and um, and then run and let it run. And I found that um, in order to I mean, to run this thing over 24 hours is a bit time consuming. And I found that I could do it within, um, it was, I think, six and a half hours by uh, pushing the request to 13,585 requests per second. I managed to get 326 million requests in that time. Um, with no failures, which is which is really good, and you can see here I've used um, the node port on, on the loc on the Kubernetes uh, implementation, uh, Kubernetes um, lab lab implementation that I have, um, and I found the optimum here was 500 clients to be able to give me the the um, 13,585 requests per second. So this is like really three times maybe more, um, three times more than what was re re requested. And so it gives you a good level of confidence that the system does work and does scale. Um, so yeah, this was, this was um, really um, beneficial. It was good to see that, um, with, that, with, that with that architecture that we could scale um, and um, what I also did was I added metrics. So on, on the actual message consumer and producer, um, you can see that um, the average uh, heap memory and CPU usage was, was really um, exceptional, um, way below than what I expected. Um, the the most the more important ones were the the average request times and um, uh, it's a pity that this I'm sorry this this graph is fairly small but you can um, you can take my word for it that the request times were under half a second so that was 300 at this point in time where I did the t the um, uh, the snapshot for the slide we were on 300 million requests. Um, and the average, the average request time was sitting around about, well, way, way under, well, at, at about 500 milliseconds, which is fairly impressive. And the same goes for the consumer, low memory usage, um, low CPU usage. Um, and uh, so all in all, I was really satisfied with, with the throughput. The final reading here um, at the end, uh, just to ensure that I got most of the data through was 326 million. And so if I go back to the initial, um, the initial test, we see that we have 326 million. So the, the actual um, Go bench told me that I, I had produced 326 million. Uh, the analytics of uh, the Prometheus server had picked up 326 million. Um, I'm a bit over here because I initially set up some tests and I did not clear them um, when I started the, um, the, 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 the complete profiling. Um, but all in all, um, we're really happy with the, um, the throughput.
with a response. And, um, you know, I think, I think uh, what we were happy with is that it is really um, was the simplicity of the design and the simplicity of the, of the implementation. So all in all, um, the, the offering really is, is fairly customizable. Um, we could make use, make it work within the different industries like um, medical for industrial type um, systems, automotive education. I mean, the list goes on really. Um, so what, what I'll do now is um, just basically share the, um, the front end design and, and overview that, that we use to implement the system. Um, what I'll do here is I'll just go ahead and show you the actual, um, the, the dashboard itself. Um, so the thinking here was just to have a main dashboard. And yes, I know um, people are going to say, um, oh, you have uh, PII data here exposed. Um, I just chose to add this as, a, as, a, as an example, but this obviously a name tied to an ID um, does not have to be, um, be revealed. Uh, this could be completely hidden. Um, we can opt in and opt out with that. As long as we have some way of um, tying a profile to a specific patient, and that could be the client doctor privilege. But we have the, the specific pieces of information here. The um, systolic blood pressure, the diastolic was not needed for the actual um, uh, statistics uh, or analytics, should I say. So we have the systolic blood pressure, the um, average heart rate, average um, blood oxygen saturation, um, and then the um, respiratory rate. Um, it's a weird icon, I know, but um, th that's basically what we had at the time of the design. And then temperature, um, that was measured. And, and these were the, 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 the basic averages over the week. So we say we only, we only collect seven days worth of data. And then against the actual AI engine, the, we use news, it's the national early warning score. It has a matrix um, and the, the scoring was against this. And, so basically then and just other information use and usage in it. And then just the level. So basically this patient, because of um, one or two measurements that were um, exceeding the, the news early, the early warning score is in critical condition, uh, well, is in critical mode. So the indicators here will show you um, the early warning scores. And you can see here that the, um, heart rate is um, is in a level U2 according to the news um, matrix, and the problem the, the the area that is problematic was the level U3, where the the temperature was um, above the average. Um, and then just lastly, we have a, a group of charts. Um, over seven days for each uh, measurement. So we have for um, blood pressure, for heart rate, um, blood oxygen, temperature, and respiratory rate. So, I mean, I know this is a very simplistic view and uh, interface. As we mentioned, this was um, uh, built around Vue.js. Vue it has a very simple implementation. It makes then calls to um, the backend service. And uh, these um, services have a, uh, J, a JWT to protect the, the endpoints. Um, that's basically it for the um, design. So in conclusion, um, 
we have, uh, I think, met our, our criteria that we designed and developed the system um, with the event-driven microservices on a loosely coupled architecture that, that have um, interfaces that were totally pluggable based on Linux containers. Um, we met the scalable and high availability criteria. Um, and we have a great um, level of, of confidence in that the system um, you know, produced the throughput that the um, that the requirement we had up front uh, could handle. So I want to thank you for listening to this talk. Um, I believe these slides are um, going to be shared, and um, the uh, appropriate links um, I have actually um, put in here. Um, and these are just, if you're really interested, I created a, a couple of blogs on LinkedIn, um, basically describing how I went about profiling the Golang microservices, um, how I used the um, ML uh, um, Scala um, Apache Spark engine to run against the news, the, net, the national early warning system. And then as a, just a little side project, um, because our Tecton pipelines were taking, um, you know, more than about eight minutes to actually um, build and deploy. Uh, I'm a great fan of Tecton and, and Argo CD, but just in a development environment, it's a bit, it's a bit slow. And so I created a custom CRCD pipeline, and I've I've also written an article on that. And it does, a, a does a um, a linting, a test, all the unit tests. It does um, um, a static code analysis via um, Sonar Cube, and then. Um, building the um, con the actual Linux container and embedding the binary in that container, pushing it to um, key I/O um, using Canico or Google Container Tools. Um, as it's a fairly neat thing. It's it actually can obviously because of of your native deployment, it 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 makes use of of that and and uh, you can get a sort of end-to-end -end development build to um, to your um, Linux container registry within a minute, minute and a half. I've also uh, dropped in links for the complete project, and um, they are, um, you'll find in the actual project links to the message producer, the message consumer for both Couchbase and Redis. Um, there's an analytics service, uh, the cron interface, um, the IoT, um, the auth interface, the templates to deploy all the um, artifacts um, and all the uh, the database, the message queue. Um, and then I have the implementation of GoBench to do the um, the, the performance profiling. And I've included the Spark ML Vital Signs Scala um, implementation as, as just as an indication. I could not share the data. The data was um, was given by a third party, and because um, we were still in a POC mode, they didn't want any data to be revealed. So I can't share the data, unfortunately. Um, I have the the Spock ML has been a clone from another project, so it's really it was a really simple implementation. So um, again, I want to thank you. Um, my contact details are here. Fans' contact details are also here. Please feel free to to contact us, clone the projects, um, read up on on what we had to offer. Um, I think it's really easy to implement other types of. Um, services um, by changing the schemas. These um, message producer and consumer are extremely simple. There's no rocket science in them. 
Um, yes, yeah, so I'll leave this open to, to question and answers. Thank you very much for, for listening.